So we mentioned debt. And one of the things that Sean and I have witnessed, even with pharmacy students, and this is true of of many of the physicians that are coming out of school, that their student debt load is off the chart. So, you know, it seems almost impossible for them to think that they can pay this back on a cash model. So I, I just wonder what thoughts you have about what we're seeing in this scenario. Mm. Well, <laughs> it's not just med students, it's pharmacy students too. Uh, I, sure. I sit across the street from a pharmacy school at Auburn University, and that's not cheap, folks. Uh, th- this is an absolute travesty. We want the best and brightest young people to consider medicine, not just Silicon Valley or Wall Street or investment banking. We want bright young people going to medical school. And we know, folks, that medical school should be largely an apprenticeship. Sure, there should be some classroom instruction. Uh, You have to learn physiognomy and all kinds of things like that. But for the most part, um, you know, we could say this about law. We could say this about a lot of professions in America. There ought to be much more of an apprenticeship and a mentorship. So the idea that young people are going to get out of debt, excuse me, get out of medical school with maybe $200,000 worth of debt. Well, what's going to happen then is they are almost certainly – Unlike doctors 30 or 50 years ago, they are going to go become a W-2 employee of a hospital or a medical group or a big corporation or a PPO or an HMO. They're not going to be independent. And because they're a W-2 employee, the entire model, the entire Hippocratic oath of them providing care with the patient's best interests in mind is, is ethically challenged because there's going to be Uh, A bureaucrat or administrator looking over their shoulder saying, no, no, don't prescribe that drug. Prescribe this cheaper drug. Or no, don't use your judgment about which which tests uh, to assign. You got to assign all the tests because our malpractice risk, even if it's tiny, you know, might kick in if we don't uh, uh, have an MRI for this minor, uh, minor car accident, for example. So everything about the direct doctor-patient relationship was – much improved when most doctors, not all, but most doctors were independent. They were business owners. We could say this of pharmacists too. Lots of them work for mm-hmm. big chains now. They used to own pharmacies. They used to know, especially their elder elderly clientele. They used to compound. They used to have a sense of what other prescriptions a patient might be taking that perhaps a harried or busy doctor wouldn't know about. And that pharmacist might say, you know, Mrs. Smith, I'm a little worried about this Uh, You know, because this drug might contradict another drug or or counteract another drug you're taking. Why don't we call your doctor? I mean, that's the kind of caring environment that my parents and grandparents enjoyed. And boy, uh, you know, when when these young people are coming out of school with debt, I mean, they might – an MD doctor, an MD doctor basically gave up their entire 20s and all the opportunity cost of that and gotten themselves $200,000 in debt. Maybe they go work for Kaiser, the big group out West. And, you know, they might only make $150,000, $175,000 out of medical school. Uh, that's, that's a situation where, you know, I, uh, where I'm a middle-aged guy, and if I'm fortunate, someday I'm going to be an old guy. And we really wonder who, who are going to be the doctors? Right. Who's going to put up with this stress and debt? And not even the prestige of a doctor 30 or 50 years ago. Who's going to do that? I fear that our best and brightest young people are going to head to other professions. Right. Yeah, I'm with you. And just to let you know, and our listeners and viewers, that and Janet might be able to uh, reiterate this, but $200,000, Jeff, that's oh. low. That's very oh, low. boy. The lowest I've ever heard is two fifty recently. And the most I've ever heard is 800 at a private oh. school. And it's just most of them are around... 350 to 500. And when wow. you think about that, yeah, when you think about that, and, and they usually pay it off over 30 years, that is a slave. That's being a slave. Now, here's what I got a question for you. The system, the healthcare system, which is, which is largely government run, do you think they like to have these physicians in big debt? Because then they can c- control them. Well, it sure seems that way. You know, the big medical groups and the big hospital groups are oftentimes, for example, in Pennsylvania, the single biggest ostensibly private employer in state is a medical group. 
It's not uh, U.S. Steel in Pittsburgh yeah. or something like that yeah. from some old movie. It's a medical group. And the reason it's a medical group is because as a society, we're pretty addled. Uh, you know, so many people are diabetic. So many people are taking multiple prescription drugs. So many people have chronic conditions. It's really become sick care rather than health care. And uh, I do think that – I don't want to say that people – are badly motivated, that they actually want a sick or taking lots of drugs. Or, you know, I don't think pharmaceutical companies sat around at night saying, gee, I hope there's a pandemic that kills a bunch of people so that we can make billions off a of vaccine. No, I, I don't think that. But I do think that once a pandemic comes, then, you know, pharmaceutical companies say, hey, you know, this is an opportunity for us. And so people tend to think that what's in their own financial interest is also in the best interests of society. And that's why if you ask a surgeon, should I do surgery or should I try rehab? A surgeon might say, well, you should probably have surgery because that's what surgeons do, right? (laughs) Right. Um, That's how (laughs) surgeons get paid. So we all have sort of a a self-interest. In in uh, in our profession, or in you know, in, when it comes to medicine, in uh, our specialty, so I don't think people are badly motivated, but I think that the system has become so big and so cumbersome uh, 